Hey everyone, my name is Jason Vincent. I'm a wedding photographer based out of Northwest Arkansas. I'm part of a husband and wife team. Uh, my wife Chasney Vincent and I own Vincent Images. A lot of times on a wedding day, we're stuck in a scene that we can't control. There's bad lighting, there's bad environment, but I really believe that if you know how to use and shape your light, you can transform any scene into a beautiful image. Some of my favorite and most popular images are ones that use off-camera light and lighting modifiers. Today we're out here at Red Rock Canyon in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're out here for the WPPI uh, Wedding and Portrait Photography Conference. I'm gonna show you how I use Magmon modifiers to shape and mold light around my subject. Then we're gonna jump into post-production and I'm gonna show you how I use Develop Presets in Lightroom to add that final touch. We just got done hiking down into Red Rock Canyon. We're here at our first location with our model, Sasha Gasares. So as you can tell, the lighting's pretty flat. It's a very overcast day. It's a little late in the afternoon, but we're gonna go ahead and add our own light. Today we're gonna be shooting with the Godox AD200 inside of a Magmod softbox for this very first shoot. Um, Gear-wise, I'm gonna be shooting with a Sony A9 and then the Carl Zeiss 35 millimeter 1.4 and then also the 85 millimeter 1.8. For this first shot, we're gonna demonstrate just a basic, beautiful bridal portrait. So I love this backdrop that we're standing in front of right now. What I wanna do is I wanna frame her inside of these red rocks and bring in some of the blue of the sky. So I'm gonna drastically underexpose the scene so that I can get the blue of the sky and then I'm gonna fill in with the off-camera flash. So we've got Sasha in place right now. Let me show you what it looks like properly exposing for her. So as you can see, she's properly exposed but the sky is a lot brighter than what I really want it to look like. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna raise my shutter speed so I can drop my exposure so I can get the sky to look exactly how I want it to. I've raised my shutter speed to 1 3200th of a second. I'm still ISO 100 F1.4. You can see now that my sky is a lot darker, she's in a very dark shadow and it's really hard to see her. So what I wanna do is I wanna keep the sky exposed how it is, but I wanna be able to see her. So to do that, I'm gonna bring in some off-camera light. So I have my assistant here with the AD200. He's gonna bring in the light and we're gonna see what it looks like with a bare bulb flash. So as you can tell from this shot, it's very contrasty because we're using a bare bulb flash. Another problem I have with the bare bulb flash is the light's just spilling everywhere. You can actually see it spilling onto the wall. For this shot, I want the light to be a lot softer. So I'm gonna bring in the softbox. I'm gonna be using the new Magmod Magbox. I'm also gonna use their focus diffuser. What this acts like is a grid on your softbox and it focuses the light onto the subject. You can use any lighting modifier you want, but for me, Magmod is the best option because it's so easy to set up and it's super portable. All right, so let's take another shot and see how this looks. So as you can see now in this final shot, the sky is exposed how I want. We have a nice wrapping light on the model and the focus diffuser has removed that light spill onto the wall. This is something I use in weddings all the time because I like to draw attention to my subject while keeping the scene a little dramatic and also exposing correctly for the sky. Now that we got that shot wrapped up, let's go ahead and bring in Sasha's husband and I'll show you another way that I use Magmod modifiers to create an engagement style shot. So we're at our next location. As you can see, we're losing light. I'm now lit by an LED light for a uh, video. What I wanna do for this shot is I want a nice dramatic silhouette. The only problem is, is we've lost a lot of light we're down stuck in this valley. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light a rock and put them in front of that light so that they become a nice silhouette. This is perfect for any wedding because you can use this on literally any wall that you find. I use it a lot in front of graffiti walls, large trees, just random blank walls, and it looks really great. So I have them set up in the first spot. We're gonna take the first shot with just bare flash. So it looks, it actually looks really good, but the light's spreading a little too much for what I want. For this next shot, I'm gonna throw a grid on it, which is gonna tighten that beam onto the wall. As you can see, it looks pretty good, but the beam's a little bit too tight and the edges are a little bit too hard. So now I'm gonna throw on a sphere on top of that. What this does is I get a nice tight beam, but the sphere actually softens the edges of the light. So this shot is exactly where I like it. As you can tell, we've lost a lot of light. We deal with this all the time on wedding days. So for our next shot, I actually wanna create an image where it looks like the sun's still out and I wanna recreate sunset. So we're in our new location. As you can see, we've lost a ton of light. There's almost no light at all right now. So I've set Sasha in front of these set of bushes and my idea is to shoot a bunch of light through these bushes to recreate the look of sunlight. Because we've lost so much natural light, I have to really push the limitations of my camera. Right now I'm at ISO 3200 with a shutter speed of 1 4th of a second and f1.4. I can get away with a shutter speed of 1 4th of a second because the Sony has built-in image stabilization. 
I need to be at settings this extreme because I want to bring in just a little bit of ambient light. I could technically raise my ISO up higher, but because I can get away with a lower shutter speed, that's what I'm going to do. To demonstrate exactly what we're doing, let's turn off this video light and we'll see what we get. So as you can see, I'm barely getting enough light on Sasha and the image is super flat. There's nothing really interesting about it. So for this next shot, I'm going to put a flash behind the bush and shoot light through the bush and we'll see what we get here. As you can see, this looks like a flash because of the color of the light. In order to fix this, I'm gonna put a full CTO gel on it so that it mimics the color of sunset. The reason why I love Magmod gels is because they can just magnet onto the front of the flash. You used to have to actually tape them or Velcro them, but this is just super easy. Now that I have my gel set up, let's see what we get. Now that we have the gel on there, it actually looks like the sun's coming through the bush. This is a great technique because you constantly lose light on a wedding day, or a lot of times you're in a situation where there's just not a lot of light and you can just throw a flash up, full power with a CTO gel and make it look like it's sunset. All right, so now that we have these three shots, let's jump into post and I'll show you how I use develop presets to get the look I want. All right, so now that we're done shooting, we're back in the hotel room. I've selected some of my favorite images and we're gonna jump into Lightroom and show you exactly what I do to kind of polish them off. So I've been a Lightroom user for most of my career. I shoot primarily weddings and so I have to go through a lot of images. Because of that, I like to use presets. If you're unfamiliar with presets, what they are is they apply a general look and aesthetic to your image with a single click. So even though you can create presets on your own, there's actually a bunch of companies that sell packs that you can buy. My favorite happens to be Develop, so I actually prefer Develop for a very specific reason. Their packs have a custom camera profile designed for each camera that they support. I'm constantly using multiple cameras. I've shot weddings where I'm shooting Nikon, Fuji, and Sony at the same time. So what I love about Develop presets is it actually brings all the colors into line and I don't have to worry about slight variations in color. So let's dive in and I'll show you how I get the look that I wanna go for. Okay, so we're in Lightroom now. As you can see, Develop offers a ton of different packs for different photographers. My favorite to use is going to be Develop Studios. As we click through here, you can kind of get an idea of what these different looks are applying. They have some really cool black and white looks, um, and then there's some really cool color ones. The one I'm going to use today is actually going to be Amarone. So if I click that, it just applies right away. And now I'm just going to kind of fix the things that I see in the image. The first thing I want to do is raise the exposure just a little bit. So although we use the softbox to light her, I actually want to add a little bit of light in the rocks right here because it's a little too dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush tool and I'm going to come down to Two Man Dodge. This is a custom brush preset that comes with the Two Man Studios pack. And from here I'm just going to paint in on these rocks to add just a little bit of light. Okay, now that we got that all painted in, I actually want to raise the exposure just a tad. The next thing I want to do is add a little bit of saturation here. So Daniel and Davina have a really cool brush preset that they call Punch Brush. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that. And from here, I'm just going to paint over the rocks. And what this is going to do is just going to bring the reds out just a little bit. So as you can tell, you can still see the softbox in this image. In order to make it easier to take out, I actually took another image where the softbox was in a different area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on that image. And then I'm just gonna hit previous and it's gonna apply all the settings and brushes that I just did. From here, I'm just gonna click on both images. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so now that we have these open up in Photoshop, what I want to do is I want to alt, I want to click on this layer and I want to alt click and add a layer mask. What this does is add a black layer mask over. And so now all I have to do is come in and paint over the softbox. So now that I have a black layer mask on here, what I want to do is paint over the softbox with white. So I'm going to make sure that I have white selected. And then I'm going to come in and just brush this out. This is, what this is doing is revealing what's underneath the layer mask, which is just the red rock. Okay, so now that I have that painted out, I'm gonna hit File, Save. And now this image is done. So that only took me a couple minutes. Here's where we started. And here's what we ended up with. All right, now that we have that done, let's move on to our next image. Okay, so here we have the backlit silhouette image. For this image, I'm gonna apply an Amarone as well. And I'm going to raise my exposure a little bit. 
And then I'm gonna go into my brush tool and I'm gonna use Daniel and Davina's punch brush and I'm just gonna paint in pretty much everywhere. So the reason why I can paint this everywhere, it's adding a lot of saturation, but because they're a silhouette, it's not doing anything to affect their skin tones. And that's all I would do to that image. So here's a before and after. So our final shot where we recreated sunlight, the first thing I'm gonna do is crop in. Um, it was really dark, so it was hard to see where the flash was, but normally when I'm recreating sunlit shots, I want the flash or the flare from the flash to be right on the edge of the frame. So I like my crop right about there. I'm gonna apply Amarone again. I'm gonna boost my exposure just a little bit. So you can see down here in the bottom corner, it's a little bit too blue, so I'm gonna get my gradient tool. I'm gonna drag a gradient up. I'm gonna reset, and I'm just going to use the temperature slider to warm that up just a little bit. I think there's something right about there. Okay. And that's all I would do to finish that shot off. So here's a before and here's after. So normally when I try and recreate images with this sunlight look, I try and have layers so that I can sell the idea that the sun is shining in this image. So foreground elements and things that the light can hit and bounce and trick you into thinking that the sun's shining. So we were really constrained in the canyon. We didn't have the ability to bring in some of those foreground elements, but here are a couple images from my portfolio that give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So I hope this video gives you a good idea of how you can get more creative while you're out on location. I didn't just use these techniques for this video, I use them all the time on wedding days. So I find that by slowing down, spending a little extra time to craft and shape my light, and then polish those images in post has really helped improve my work. If you wanna practice getting creative with light, you can do it with a wide variety of lighting modifiers. If you wanna check out Magma, they're actually offering a special discount code that you can see below. Same goes for presets, there's a lot of them out there or you can create your own, but if you wanna check out Develop, they're also offering a discount code that you can check out below. Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you learned something. If you guys decide that you wanna try some of these techniques, I'd love to see what you get. You can post them to the comments in the F-Stoppers article, there's a link to that below. If you guys want to learn more about photography, F-Stoppers is posting content constantly. If you want to get really in-depth, check out the F-Stoppers store. Thanks again for watching, guys. I can't wait to see what you guys create.